Hello everybody, welcome back to the next part of the tier list. Now we're gonna take a look at the artillery. Um, I don't think there's anything left to do in terms of housekeeping, so let's get into it, I'd say. 105 SP. Um, I think this is a pretty unique one, i.e. it's not like an your typical M109 type of deal, which uh, these artillery pieces usually are. Uh, I'm just looking around, it seems to be quite similar to the Abbot, it seems, at least in terms of uh, HE and uh, dispersion. There's, there's um, not a lot of unique stats when it comes to, you know, dispersion and HE. They're fairly standardized. Range can be very different, but, um, you know, HE, suppression, and most importantly dispersion, those sets are usually, you know, there's, there's not a lot of variance uh, when it comes to that. Um, so I also have the armory tool open because, especially when it comes to aim time, that's of course not shown on the unit card. And as I looked up just now, the aim time is only 20 seconds. Now here's another important thing. Um, the 5 HE on a 105 SP is not the same type of 5 HE you find on a mortar, right? Um, does this actually have 265? Let me compare this to the to another 5 HE. Yeah, okay. Um, so for example, if you compare this to the VPM, right? Um, it says, you know, the VPM should maybe even be even better because it has higher suppression, right? However, uh, I, I'm not gonna... Uh, what, what, what? VP... What the hell is it called again? I'm just so confused. It's not VPM. VPM. Okay, sorry for that. So um, um, if you look at the actual stats, again, look at, um, I'm not going to show this, but uh, you can take a look at this for yourself with the armory tool. If I don't forget, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, and we can actually see that the splash radius or splash radii, plural, I suppose, are very, very different. Um, the splash radius for a VPM, which I assume is the same for every 5 HE mortar, you know, mortar is important, is 60 for the damage value, is 60 in-game range units, um, which is not the same as a meter, as far as I understand, um, and 180, or maybe it is, I don't know, and 180 for the suppression. Right, and of course, the further you get away from the center, the less damage you actually deal. For this 105 SP, the splash radius is actually 105 in the splash for the damage and uh, 210 for the um, for the uh, whole, um, suppression, Jesus, brain fart. Um, and you might have noticed, hey, that's the same value as the, as the uh, caliber. And I believe it should be pretty uniform. Um, but the damage radius of a tube artillery piece, not a howitzer, not a mortar, but like a howitzer like this, um, the splash radius of the damage is equal to the caliber and the splash radius of the suppression is equal to the caliber times two. At least that's something that you can uh, take from a unit card even though it doesn't show on it. Um, the rate of fire, of course, is also very important because, once again, this usually the 5 RPM and, and shit like that that is shown on the unit card is worth very little. Um, the 105 SP has a salvo length of 10 and a shot reload of 8, um, meaning it shoots 10 times and uh, with eight, 8 seconds in between, which isn't actually horrible. 8 seconds shot reload is not that bad for a spam artillery, however... <laughs> And um, for a spam artillery like this, like the 50 point artillery howitzers, aim time is not important. Um, shot reload is kind of important, um, but it is a fairly low caliber howitzer, and uh, thus the damage radius or the actual radius of the impact is not this big. The HE itself is not as important as the splash radius. Um, in general, I think these kind of low, really low tier, i.e. 50 point artillery are a bit undervalued, but I think the at the same time, there's virtually always better options. So even though this isn't quite E tier or D tier, which I don't think it is, um, yeah. Then again, I, I think, I th actually, I think it still is uh, D tier. Um, another thing that I should mention is 
Well, I, we'll, I guess we'll get to it once once we're there. Um, 155SP, that is essentially a slightly better M109. At least stat-wise, I believe. I will have to use the armor tool a lot, so I'll, it's going to take a bit more time each uh, every every time I'm, I'm looking at a unit. Um, I, I don't know if there's any 60-point M109s in, the, in here. Yeah, there's not, at least not with the name M109. I guess this is probably not exactly an M109, um, but it is still very similar. The rate of fire is the exact same style length of 7, shot reload of 10 seconds. So it shoots at a lower rate of fire and also shoots fewer rounds. Just looking. Yeah. I don't, I, I guess it's more expensive, 10 points more expensive than an M109 because of the range. Um, still honestly only D tier and we get a 203 SP which is your typical M110 you know M110 A2 actually because it has extended range um, they're fine I personally don't use them as much as others but they certainly have their place for sniping or just you know keeping certain buildings pinned down they they definitely have the role Softening up certain patches of forest stuff like that. Goshtsik, I assume maybe it might be pronounced or something like that. Um, this is an interesting one. This is a Gvostika stat copy. The Gvostika has an aim time of 25 seconds. <laughs> a salvo length of 12, shot reload of 10. It shoots 12 rounds uh, with 10 seconds in between. But it has, again, fairly low caliber. Um, and if you don't have a higher to fire, then you want to have at least high caliber. And as such, this isn't very good. Um, pretty, pretty low shot reload. Um, I tried making this work, but it's just... <sighs> Usually, due to the... Uh, I know this This isn't directly how the tier list is work, but it's still worth pointing out. Uh, it's, you're usually just better off spending your activation points at diff on different units. Dana, uh, once again, a 30 seconds aim time piece, artillery piece. Uh, also pretty low rate of fire of 10 seconds shot reload, 30 seconds aim time and 10 salvo length. It does have a high caliber at least, uh, 152, 152 millimeters, so the actual impact has a reasonable damage radius as well as suppression radius. It's wheel, which can be nice for like evading counter artillery, but generally not a big deal. Um, yeah, it comes with a lot of ammo, which come, sometimes can be nice, um, because that means that especially if you call it in fairly late or something, or you don't, or you don't have any fob left, you, you just call in a, another one if you didn't buy all of them already. So, so stuff like that can be nice. Usually not on these low or mid tier artillery pieces that most of the time only really be, start being worth it. Uh, after sustained fire and a lot of use. Um, but it is 90 points. Would I rather have one of these or like close to two of these or like two of one, two one of fives? I think, I think a single Dana is probably still better because it is also very accurate. So I think, even though nobody uses it, but it is, I, I think I said it all the time, you virtually always have better choices. So that's no surprise. But I think it might actually be C tier. Gostica, you know, it's the same as the 2S1 Go Gost Gost Gostic Gostic Um Yeah Space 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 Okay Akadzia Akadzia is actually usable. Akadzia is very similar, very 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 similar to the to your typical M109, it has a slightly lower uh, slash radius because it's a slightly lower caliber. But a big deal is it has a shot reload of 12 seconds. 12 seconds in between shots. I, I don't know if there's a longer. I think I guess the only the, like these 10 HG ones have like 15 seconds, I believe. But 10 seconds between shots, that's crazy long. Uh, 12 seconds um, for uh, spam artillery. But again, it does. It is cheap for seven HE, and it has good range for fifty-five points. Um, 
we'll come to it in a bit, but M basic M109s and 50.1s have actually been, I wouldn't call them meta, but um, they have been popular for a while, only a short while, uh, but these days not so much, but it's a, it's, it can still be decent, especially in team games. One versus one's not so much because they will struggle on bigger maps, but that's a different unit. We'll get to that later. Um, that said, I would say the Akansigas are a bit worse, but honestly, for 55 points, 7H e-spam, um, don't underestimate that. Honestly, this might even be B tier, but I just I just never use it because stuff like Eurogen exists, right? And you don't even have to be a tryhard to, like, you know. Um, and honestly, like 70, they're not worth it. Why? It's the 70, 90 points, you, especially, I, I think they're the worst ones. I think stuff like the Dana and like the 90, 100 point M09s are fine. But these, I think, are the worst ones because for the for like so much, for such a higher price increase, all you get is um, essentially a bit more accuracy by the same shitty aim time. But I just looked up and you actually have a slightly higher rate of fire as well. It shows on a unit card, but never trust unit cards. Um, in this case, I guess we can because they have the same ammo count. Uh, which is usually what what fucks up the rate of fire on unit cards of artillery. Uh, back to it though, it does actually have a short reload of ten seconds. Still though, for what these kind of artillery pieces do, this is just way too inaccurate and way too low rate of fire to be used in like one or two seconds. I.e., you need to spam them, and if you spam them, you might as well use these, the cheap ones. Um, so. Pretty easy D tier for me. The Mister, Mister is the Mister is like a very very solid ten seconds aim time piece. The, however, the Mister and the East German set copy, as well as the Telak ninety one, are the only ten second aim time artillery pieces, if I remember correctly, that have this dispersion. Everything else has a higher dispersion of three nine sixty. I want to say three six forty. Um, but the biggest seal, of course, is 10 seconds aim time. Uh, six second shot reload with a salvo length of five. So the actual sustained fire is pretty nice. Um, they're not ideal for sniping, for one, you know, because they have a high dispersion, and two, they don't have like the three second shot reload of an AS90 or whatever the beacon has. I don't remember. I think it's also three seconds or two seconds. Um, but it is very solid for what it does. It's not groundbreaking. Um, usually, once again, I think especially in, in, in UCSR you have better options available, but they're solid. Um, and, you know, it's not that, it's, in the one versus one, it's not that big of a deal, but in team games, that armor, five front, three side, and two back and top armor can actually be really, really nice uh, if you're a bit careless when it comes to avoiding counter artillery. Uh, but it's a solid choice and thus uh, beat here. Uh, Cara Fiat, Cara Fiat, whatever. Once again, your typical Gwostika. Pivonka, this is an interesting one. I much, much, much prefer the Pivonkas, etc., over M110s. Despite, at first glance, one might think, well, I mean, for a higher price, they're less accurate, right? And why do I care about extra ammo? Especially on the back in the day, of course, when I was there and people, a lot of people in general were active there, right? Out of Eugen forums, I was a top tier forum warrior, if any of you remember. <laughs> um, there was kind of a crusade going on of people saying, these Pivonkas, Malkas, Peons, they're so, so, so much worse than the M110s and they cost so much more. Not true. Why? Here's the deal. Let me open up this. Let me open up this. That. Um, yeah. Let me quickly show this to you. I hope that there's nothing on screen that I don't want to be shown. Nothing, no nudity. Uh -huh, just kidding. There we go. All right. I don't want to switch this. So I usually don't do this. I won't do this all the time because I don't want to forget about having desktop capture on etc but let me show this to you uh, the m110 salvo length 2 shot reload 15 aim time 35 pivonka salvo length 4 shot reload 15 aim time 35 what does this mean they both aim for 35 seconds 
shoot a first round, reload for 15 seconds, shoot a second round. Now what happens to the M110? It has to reload for 30 seconds. And if it's standing right next to the fob, basically it will shoot again after 35 seconds because you will have to re-aim after each salvo. So at minimum after 35 seconds, it will shoot its third shot. What does the Pivonka do? It is still reloading, fires its third shot, reloads again and fourth shot. And before the M110 even got its third shot out, the Pivonka has already fired four of its shots and can now do the same thing when it comes to reloading and re-aiming. Essentially, it has more than twice the rate of fire. Unless my math is just complete. My math might be wrong, actually. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to check my math, but you get the point, right? That that is that is so much more useful, especially for keeping like a small town or for something pinned down. Um That is all. <laughs> and as such, I think the Pivonka is so much better, as well as the Malka, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh but the question, the actual the more important question is actually does it put an eight here? Um, it's it's a difficult question. Does it put it in eight here? I don't think it does. Maybe maybe it should be. Um, the thing with the Malka and the Pivonkas, which only I will leave, uh, the CSSR and USSR have access to. North Koreans have some kind of similar one, but it has only nine inch. And Poland as well. But all of these decks generally have better artillery available, so you don't see that very often. Pivonka I only see in uh, in Entente Armored or Mech, for example. Is it even in Mech? But Armored for sure. Me no, Mech I believe as well. So it, it might be on the verge of 8 here. Once again, I think this is the type of unit where I'm like, maybe I'll change my mind once I go over all of the units again, and then I'll adjust the ranking. 2 L7 Peon. Quite literally the same thing, outside of the name, of course. Or the designation might be more accurate. Uh, the Malka is the same, but a bit better, because it actually it does shoot all eight rounds until it is empty. Um, so it will shoot those eight rounds with a shot reload of 15 seconds. So that's actually even better. And given that that's generally units that you buy two or maybe three of, although the Malka might have a lower availability and such, you might actually prefer the Peon. Um, the 20 points. Not a huge deal. Of course, 20 points times 3 is still 60 points, right? It's not to be ignored, but not a massive deal. So that 20 points, I think, oh, and of course, it's also more accurate. Then again, you might not actually want that. You, you don't want it. Generally, you don't want artillery to be too accurate. Um, but I think it is a, certainly a side grade at the very least. 2s7 Pivonia. It's the last one of these, I believe. Oh, that's, that's a forward slash. Well, it's not a forward slash. There we go. Okay, MS the recording, yes. 75 MSSR. I tried to make this word work so, so many times. It's just always a bit disappointing. I think it will perform better in team games because it's easier to get a two or three stack of those. Get to supply the front line so you don't have to drive it back to the fob all the time. Um, but it's just so inconsistent. You have to use it at minimum range. It only carries one salvo. It has a 30 seconds aim time. This flash radius is not particularly amazing. The rate of fire isn't great. It has a shot reload of 0 0.2 seconds uh, compared to, let's say, the Plumman has 0 0.2, you know. Um, high, low shot reload isn't inherently bad, of course, but it is bad when your rocket itself is not very good, right? If you compare to the Lars 2, which I think, uh, Lars 2, maybe the RM70, actually. RM70 and Lars 2 is, is, is a tiny, tiny bit better, I'd say. But RM70 is like on the verge of being a good artil MLRS artillery piece. Um, i.e. when it comes to like the rate of fire as well as the the rocket splash damage damage. But if you compare the MSSR to the Lars 2, and the MSSR does have a slightly higher splash radius, but at much, much lower um rate of fire, 
make means that there's so much more time for the enemy units to to react to uh, move out of the way so there is a lot more a lot less instant shock value um, and of course the aim time means it is much much harder to use it defensively with 30 seconds aim time so yeah and of course you know being tracked it is much slower to the front line etc etc the last two carries the second salvo although the salvo is only 18 rockets blah 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 long story short um i think the main reason why you see it is because sometimes people don't know what else to use i think in team games i would use the thunder but in team games at the same time the mssr is also so much more usable than in one versus ones okay now here we are the first mortar Mortars are going to be an interesting choice. Someone was saying, well, you're going to put all mortars in S here because they have smoke. And I get where you're coming from, but let's let's go to the title here, right? Because D tier, units that are only really used if they fill an important role, but there's no other alternatively, alternative. Now, the role of a mortar is pretty much unique, right? I mean, sure, you can smoke with heavy artillery, but let's be real, it doesn't actually fill the same role because of the aim time, they're usually much further back from the front line, i.e. the round has to fly much longer, so there's a lot longer fly time. So by the time you're, the smoke from heavy artillery is there, you're probably already much further advanced or you pushed much further back or your tank is already dead. You know, basically the smoke generally arrives way too late. And then of course there's also smoke from MLRS, but it's also a completely different scenario. What I'm trying to say here is, I think, or in my, my eyes and the way I'm doing the skill list, mortars are basically their own very unique role um, when it comes to gameplay. And that is, on top of, of course, they can of course be used offensively and that's nice and all, and certainly useful, but mainly in their form of smoke usage, they're basically unique because no other unit can, you know, put out smoke as fast as they can. Essentially, again, MLRS, blah, 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 but, you know, pinpoint smoke and stuff like that. Meaning that, no, I'm not going to put all mortars into S tier. Um, yeah, pretty much. So, am I going to put them in, like, D tier or something? Unless, except for, like, the five good ones? No, probably not. Um, but, yeah, I think so. Let's let's get into it. Um, 81 MSP. There's only, like, five or six tiers of mortars with a few unique ones. So most of the mortars are going to be pretty fast after you got through a few of them. 81 MSP is your typical 3HE mortars. I think 3HE mortars, when it comes to smoking, are the second worst ones. I think the worst ones are the 2HE ones. When it comes to, like, on average usage, I think they might be the worst ones. Because also offensively, they're not too great. Relatively low damage, relatively low splash radius and all that. Um... Actually, you know what? Let me actually look at look at the numbers. Look at the HS30, and let's look at the 81 MSP. So the HS30 has a splash radius of 60, and the MS uh, MSP has 40 when it comes to the HE damage, and um, when it comes to suppression, it's three times of that uh, number. So 5 HE has 180, 3 HE has 121. So very significant, given that it's a radius, and not just you know, my i.e. the actual coverage is is more than just you know, uh, one third lower. So, three HE motors, I think are. Yeah, I think they're gonna be. I think I'm gonna put them into C tier. Um, I don't think any motor will really be D tier. But yeah, 4H motors are pretty good. Uh, I think 5H are like more or less a premium, but 4H are just very solid. Um, not much to complain. They have good range. They have good damage, like decent damage. Uh, somewhat, ac they're like still accurate enough. They have, uh, um, you know, they just yeah. Another thing to go to uh, take into account is not, not all motors have the same ammo. Um, we'll come to that in a bit. ML60 is not really a smoke. Unit. Of course you can do, but the main role of this is to be used as close range indirect fire support. Use this a couple you, you put this a couple of hundred meters behind your front line, ideally behind your infantry, where your infantry is gonna fight, especially in forests because it takes much longer and units are less mobile. Uh, your infantry engages enemy infantry or even vehicles, anything, and that doesn't die instantly, of course. 
and you tell your ML60 to shoot there as well. Why are the ML60s? Why are the ML60s so good? Because two HE motors have a ridiculously low aim time. Uh, the aim time of nearly all of the motors uh, highly correlates with their HE value, i.e., the lower your HE, the lower your aim time, with a few exceptions. Um, for example, the five HE motors. In this example, the German Panzer Mercer HS30 has an aim time of 8 seconds for its HE rounds. If you look at the AML60, it has an aim time of 4 seconds. And then I believe, what's, then it's 6 for 4 HE, 4 for 3 HE. Well, 3 HE also is only 4 seconds, really? I'm I'm am I'm just a bit I didn't actually know that. Oh. Huh. Well the, the more you know, unless mm -hmm. so four H three two and three HE have four seconds. Four HE is six and five HE is eight seconds. Forty HE rounds. For the more uh, smoke rounds, all motors, I believe, have four seconds. Uh, usually, it's for most artillery pieces, it's half the aim time. For mortars, it can't go below or it, it can't go below four. Um, still, though, the advantage of it has still has over like the, the thirty point three HE ones is it's twenty freaking points, so it's cheap AF. At the and the other thing is, of course, they're very very accurate. And in this scenario, sometimes you might even say that the low. Um, Splash radius coupled with the high accuracy means that you're going to do a lot less friendly fire than you would do with other um, motors. And the fact that it's wheeled is actually really, really useful, of course, due to its low range. Uh, and as such, I'm actually going to put it in B tier because it's such a. There's only very few of these motors, but they're so unique and they're they're so so strong with their crazy rate of fire that the uh, that they of course also have. To. I've completely forgot to mention it. Of course, the lower your HE, the higher rate of the higher your rate of fire is as well. Generally speaking, uh, the Serval is honestly the same, but essentially, <sighs> is it worse or is it not worse? Right, the motor is as close to being identical as it can be. Essentially, you get a tad bit more range, which is ca kind of nice. Um, but for five points, when we get the auto cannon, now you're not going to use this offensively for the auto cannon. However, once the you know the mortar is empty, now you have a mobile auto cannon, which might actually be pretty nice. You know, it's essentially a Vab T20. You know, it has the same gun as the Vab T20, although only oh no, it does have the twenty percent extra accuracy. It used to have fifteen. So, you know, the other cannon is not really horrible, especially with three or four of those lying around. So, honestly, I think this might just be a side grade. And honestly, if you want to have fun with a somewhat different type of approach of the support app or something in Eurocore, or you're playing Eurocore motorized, try to use these little efforts, you know, in a two or three stack and for forest fights. They're, they're going to do wonders. Um, the th important thing is don't, you know, fire positions as right click on the enemy unit you know that's essentially the same as fire positioning on them but it's just much much faster for you vpm 120 that this is now a, one of the interesting ones um it has um higher accuracy or lower dispersion than basically nearly any other 5g motor i think it might actually be even more accurate than the known as we'll come to that later it has four seconds six seconds aim time as opposed to eight uh, like I said, the HS30, and I presume nearly every other 5HG motor, if not every other 5HG motor, has uh, 8 seconds aim time. Um, the, the, you know, actual damage, etc. is the exact same. But it is, of course, very, very accurate. Um, the big, diff uh, big bad thing is it has only 54 rounds. And that is pretty bad, especially when you consider that supplying motors, especially high G motors, is actually very, very um, expensive because one VPM120 shell costs 40 supply. If you compare this to a 50 point M109, that thing costs 25 supply. Um, you know, so I wouldn't use them as a general motor because they're just going to be very, they don't carry a lot, they're expensive, you don't get a lot of them. Because generally speaking, when you use mortar for smokes, etc., instead of resupplying them, because again, that's expensive, relatively speaking, 
um, you just buy a new motor, right? But a VPN for one carries not a lot of ammo, but it's also 60 points, especially when you look at zero cover, you have the HS30, which is also 5 HE for half, literally half the price. It's kind of a j bad joke. So it's still gonna be in B tier because it is a 5 HE motor, some 5 HE motors are great, but it's really more of a sniper unit. Um, and especially with a higher aim time, it's mobile, has good range, very accurate, can be nice. And of course, you know, the added benefit of, you know, also being able to smoke. Now, here we come of here we come to the big bad boy, the Amos. That obviously I was also just as accurate. Actually, I don't even know the aim time of the Amos. Uh eight seconds aim time. As per radius, etc. is the same. It says a salvo length of six. I legitimately have no idea if it means it uses it shoots. <laughs> Usually I would go in game, you know what, I'll be there in just a second, I'm gonna pause the recording and do some tests. And I've returned, without even noticing. So I quickly tested something. So as I said, salvo length of 6, what does this mean? No, it does not shoot 6 times, it means it shoots 3 times with 2 shots, you know, at the same time simultaneously. And I totally did know that already and didn't just pause the, record, uh, the recording to test this out. So. Um, with the shot reload of six, I it shoots you know both things at the same time, three times with six seconds in between. Salvo reload of twelve seconds. Um, but of course, as mortars tend to be, especially the high G mortars, especially this one because it essentially has a has twice the rate of firefighter mortars, they eat supply like nothing else. Um, if you use the Amos, do not use the beacon as well. Uh, I think I mentioned this in the Scandinavia deck crash course. But um, it eats through supply like nothing else. Uh, so does the beacon. And even if you have two farms, then you're probably better off using two beacons as opposed to beacons and Amos. Unless, you, of course, you have teammates, your teammates' fob or something to also use. But um, Or you just want to meme around. Of course, you do you. But I would not suggest using, if you're playing seriously, both Amos and beacon. Um, but yeah, honestly, that is just the main reason why it's not used, because the beacon exists. Because as, of course, the Amos, you know, can of course also be used for smoke, but it is it is a damage dealer. Um, with its, you know, very accurate and two rounds at the same time, fire rate type of thing, it deals, it dashes out damage like not a lot of other units in this price range. Uh, especially, of course, that low aim time compared to stuff like M Model 9s and shit. So in that sense, it is incredibly strong. Um, but once again, I think it's eight here. Uh, I, I, re I repeated this. I'm going to repeat this as well. I said this in the Scandinavia crash course video. Um, I don't know if Putin still runs this, but as last time I played versus him, which is a while ago, he preferred or he used this over the beacon. Though maybe this was just, oh my God, maybe it was just for fun or, you know, yeah, it is certainly viable. And this is actually one of the, I think the first time in the non-infantry type where I'm going to use the color blue. Um, yeah. Blue, of course, means that the main reason why it's not picked is because there's some, something better available. In this case, the beacon. We'll get to that once when we are there. Uh, Amex 105. Is it is that copy of this thing? It is. It has a bit more range, but yeah. I don't think you know we need to go over this again. I'm just gonna assume it also has six, 20 seconds aim time. I think there's a, everyone knows why they're not picked. M109A3. Similar thing with the Akatsia, you know, it's still not very accurate. It still has a crappy aim time. Uh, 10 seconds shot reload. Um, it, it does, of course, deal a bit more damage, but yeah. M109A5NL is our second 10 seconds aim time howitzer. Um, I think it has the same rate of fire stats as the American Paladin. Actually, it doesn't, it has a higher rate of fire. It also has a shot reload of, shot reload of six seconds, salvo length of five, 10 seconds aim time. Yeah, it's more accurate than the Mister. It has, is it the exact same fire pattern? It is the exact same fire pattern. Um, of course, it carries a bit less armor, but it also deals a bit more boom. Uh, 
It has more range, but also no direct fire possibility. Uh, it's just C tier. No, of course not. Um, it is solid. Nothing really more to say. Yeah, another shitty other repeats. Uh, we have the Amex Oof one, whatever that Oof 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 means. Um, very similar thing to the Dana. You know, it's it's non ten seconds aim time, but you know it has it deals a tiny bit more. It has a tiny higher splash radius, but like same accuracy. Not a significant amount more range, you know, with the range that Dana has, it's good enough for most maps. It carries less ammo, it has the same horrible aim time, unless I'm wrong. Yep, 30 seconds aim time. Short reload of 7.5 seconds, so it does have a higher rate of fire. And I think it's also 20 points more. Sure, it's not a unit you buy a lot of, but yeah. It's, I think, more or less in the same tier. It is not completely garbage, because again, the accuracy can be nice, but... Yeah, bias in 81 millimeters. Uh, how many? How much ammo does it have? Yeah, it has only 90 rounds. Uh, that is the big deal of many weird motors that carry significantly less uh, amount of rounds. And once again, you generally don't resupply motors because it takes so much supply. You you wouldn't even think that that um, the ammo count is actually a very nice, a very important thing to look at if you use motors. Um, it doesn't make it like significantly worse. Um, it does mean that if you want to use it offensively, the wheels certainly help because of the lower range compared to 5 page e-motors. Um, Beacon in 1A is like before the, the younger brother of the, or the, I guess the older brother, given that it existed for longer, of the Beacon 1C. Um, that thing, that thing is still 8 here. Why? Because it has the same crazy rate of fire as the Beacon 1C. Um, it has higher, no, it has the same availability actually, but it comes available in Mac. Um, but one one thing that you have to keep in mind, the supply cost is essentially half. It's a bit less than half, a bit more than half, I should say, but it, the, the shells cost essentially, you know, you get two shells for the price of one beacon, one seashell. I, if you use two beacon, one ace, you can fire twice as many rounds uh, out of a forward than a beacon, one C can. So, Maybe you want to use a beacon 1A, but of course it has only 30 seconds aim time. But if other decks had this available, I think uh, this would certainly be used. Most notably, stuff like Blue Dragons or Eastern Block, who struggle with um, uh, you know continuous indirect fire support. They would probably love this unit, um, but of course there's a reason why it's never used. So we're also gonna give this the blue color. And of course the reason is the beacon one C. Um unless you're new, you probably know why this is uh eight tier, S tier I should say. It has ten seconds same time, it has a crazy rate of fire, and of course it's seven HE. Uh, it of course eats supply like nothing else, but there's if if you wanna say fuck you, you to a point, like to a single point on the map, you use the beacon 1C and, and, and just shoot there one salvo. It's sh of course, the salvo is 14 seconds, uh, 14 shots, right? It fires its whole magazine, if you want to call it that, if it has something like that, with a shot reload of three seconds. Um, that's just one stream of continuous fire. That's like, yeah, I, this, this thing, this thing is just crazy good. It's just crazy good. You, you can even like uh, use this pretty well for like uh, sniping the opening road on stuff like uh, Highway to Seoul because every, everyone thrives on the same road. And of course, being a, not the MLRS means it's actually harder to see that thing coming, right? Because smaller rounds and only in one single line and not like multiple lines. It's, it is just, yeah. BM21 Grad, this thing is horrible, like actually bad. Um, it's essentially an RM70, but it doesn't have 10 seconds aim time, or 15 seconds, whatever the RM70 has. And um, it has a much lower rate of fire. It essentially has similar problems to the MSSR, except being even worse. Let me actually pull up the, the comparison between the Grad, Grad, I should say, and the MSSR. Now, one thing that the Grad has going for it is kind of similar to the Lars one. That is, it shoots all 40 rounds at once, which can be kind of nice. But it has an even lower splash radius than the MSSR. With the same horrible rate of fire, same horrible aim time. 
but it also costs 25 points more. Um, for I think if, if it was 50 points, it still wouldn't be used, and still would not be too great, but it would be, you know, it would in a vacuum be fine, like, okay, given that it's 50 points, but 75 points for the Grad, no. Jurgen, S tier, um, you want to attack something, you fire five rockets there, everything is stunned. You want to defend against something, you fire five rockets at where the enemy is coming or driving through it, everything is stunned and panicked and useless. You have a problem, you're again it. Um, you can even use it for sniping, although then you might want to upgrade it, but it's not its primary role. It, it's just it's just a similar fucking machine to the beacon, except you know you actually divert the whole firepower into a bigger area. Um, it's just yeah. And of course, if you want to fire full salvo in like a small forest, shit's also gonna die and take damage. You know, Jurgen is just. It might, in my eyes, be the best artillery piece. I mean, you can also. I mean, of course, a beacon one C, but then again, it's a bit more specialized. You know, the Jurgen is so much more versatile. Although the beacon one C is already pr pretty versatile. Uh, the plummet, of course, is also amazing. And I think those three are really just probably to the content. Because if you compare to the LRM, the LRM has a slightly higher suppression and damage radius, but not very noticeable, especially given the fact that Jurgen has A, a higher fire rate, which is actually kind of nice, but also carries four rockets more, meaning, and it's not about you know spawning with four rockets more, but it's about uh, being able to fire like essentially four salvos of four rockets as opposed to three salvos of four rockets, right? With the same availability and same price. Smirch. The only, except for the attack amps, the only really good cluster MLRs in the game at the moment. I mean, at the moment, as if it's gonna get patched, haha. <laughs> but, you know, in the game, the others have, you know, issues of not being too strong, or in the case of the Yugoslav one, just 30 seconds aim time. But this merge, a very, very, very good cluster MLRs. But as all cluster MLRs, they're just. <sighs> Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's quite S tier because you know it's also only one per card. You have to keep in mind, and of course it's just not as versatile as a Eurogan. It doesn't stun units because the thing is with the Smurge you actually have to hit. It's much easier to evade than a Eurogan most of the time, believe it or not. Although the Smurge is also more of a, like an anti-air sniper, um, but I think that's just a bit harder to do because the thing is anti-air or like tanks, etc. Um, when you see the Smurge coming, sure maybe you get hit once, but then you're out of range, you know, if you see it coming early enough and you react early enough, you might get hit once, maybe twice. Uh, whereas if you get hit by a again, you're gonna get stunned and panicked and then there's no following up you know, damage. You know, stuff is stunned and essentially worthless. With the smudge, you might damage it, but it's still not worthless, right? If a Tunguska has half HP, it's still gonna like do fine. It might be like shaken suddenly or worried, but it's still gonna be fine enough, you know? Um, that's why it's just not as versatile, but it can still do a lot, a lot of damage. BM24. This might actually be the first E tier unit. Um, these. <laughs> no, what the hell? Google? Um, the Napalm with 1 HE, they're inaccurate. The Napalm patches are very small. Granted, I haven't used them a lot, but the few times I used them, they were just useless. BM21. We went over this already. Oh, that's not BM23, it's BM24. Sorry. This thing, this is the only BM24 that's actually great. Uh, this is actually an amazing artillery piece. It doesn't use a lot of supply. It has a pretty big splash radius and damage when it comes to the rockets. It has 30 seconds aim time. It doesn't have the best range, but it's 50 points. Uh, a single one, if used close to minimum range, will basically stun everything that is and panic everything in the you know area at fire set. And, and two of them will do that at medium range as well. Like I said, they're also very cheap to resupply. You used to have a high availability. The only downside is they're not as good defensively, again, because of the 30 seconds aim time. But offensively, they're actually powerhouses. They're incredibly strong. I should actually, because they're all called the same, do like a little chai for China after that, so people know which one we're talking about. I guess to avoid confusion, I'll do this as well. PHL81 is one of those, once again, actually a unit that I not used, haven't used a lot, but every time I've gone, gone up against it, 
it just did nothing. You might think high rate of, I think it fired, does it fire 20 or 40 shots in a row? Let me, let me check. It's like a RM70 just with cluster rockets, right? I think the Polish one? No, the Czech one. Oh no, it's actually a different model, but I guess maybe the thrower, the actual MRS system is maybe the same. In any case, it fires uh, 40 shots with a shot rate of six, 0 0.6 seconds. The thing is, you might think, well, it fires so many, you know, cluster rockets, you know, and we all know heat does at least one damage, you know. In theory, yes, you might be like, oh my, it's gonna do like so much chip damage because of all the rockets. In, in practice, you're gonna do barely anything. And for 80 points, because the, the radius of the damage is actually so small. Maybe you do one or two damage, but it's so easy to evade as well, because you need so much, you need the enemy units to stand still for so long to actually do damage and you still do, do nothing. Um, it's just... I don't think it's completely wasted, because there's, there's times where an 80 point very weak artillery piece is gonna do more for you than an 80 point tank. Because just forcing the enemy out of a position can still be worth uh, worth something. But if you do that, you also want to have an additional effect because you don't want them to move out and then immediately move back in again, you know. This is the Polish BM24, which is the same as, you know, every other one except for the Chinese one. Another BM21 Grad, another useless artillery piece. RM70, that's the HE one. Uh, this one is usable. It has 0 0.2 seconds short reload. It has a shorter aim time of 0, uh, 20 seconds, I wanna say. But it's really mainly that 0 0.2 seconds short reload um, and firing 20, 20 rockets and then reloading for only 80 seconds, meaning you can uh, shoot another salvo very quickly after again. Um, that makes it at least you know, versatile and easy to use, quick to use, you know. Yeah, uh, the actual rockets are just as bad as the one on the ground, but once again, just being able to fire 20 of them in such a short period of time makes them so much more, so much stronger. It's still not an amazing artillery piece, honestly. Um, but you know, if you have two of them at the same time, it can do it, it can do some work. But you know, it's, yeah, it, it's not like for one, like for 20 points, it's a bit sad, for 20 points more, the Eurogen just does just incredible work compared to this. Cesar. Our next 10 seconds aim time material piece, one with that is also available in airborne actually. Shot reload of six seconds again, salvo length of six. So same as the M109, the Dutch one, but I think one long one more shot in the salvo, I eat five more rounds before having to reload of 30 for 30 seconds. I should mention that I believe literally every two, uh, howitzer has a salvo reload of 30 seconds, i.e. once they fire the salvo, they have to all reload for 30 seconds, no matter the caliber, unless it's a mortar, of course. Um, but other than that, it's basically the same. Of course, uh, being wheeled and having no armor means that it you know, for one, of course, wheels mean you can evade a bit faster unless you're in a forest, but no armor means that especially cluster rounds or something will deal a lot of damage to you if, if, if you're gonna survive even. Uh, Dana, we already had this. It's just called Dana, not even a WZ. On Dava, um, not a huge fan of this because it has a shot reload of 8.5 seconds, so quite a bit lower reload time, uh, rate of fire compared to Cesar. Uh, it fires for 10 shots, so if you want to do continuous fire, that's fine. But at the end of the day, it's still a 10 seconds aim time artillery piece. And in those in these scenarios, sure, you want to have a high rate of fire, ideally as well. But like 10 seconds is really the main draw. And of course, accuracy and high HE. Uh, FV432M. Uh, that is actually the best 3 HE motor, I believe, because if you compare to the Japanese one, for the same price, you get 20 more rounds. Um, not a huge deal, because it's still you know, 3HG and you know, the autonomy off-road speed actually can be annoying at times. Not a lot of times, but sometimes, you know, but it's nothing that suddenly makes it like ridiculously good. Abbott, it's just like the AMX and 109s, just on a different chassis. You know, you can have some fun with them, um, but if, you, if you're being serious about, uh, you know, winning and stuff, I wouldn't use them. Uh, same with the Akatsias. Uh, did we have one? Yeah, we had the M109A3. Uh, the Dutch used them, I believe. What does RA mean? Royal Army? 
Someone tell me in the comments if anyone's listening. AS90, one of the better um, A tier, uh, uh, 10 seconds aim time howitzers. Um, I'm not a, th this is actually an interesting unit because it's, I would definitely use this in Commonwealth because also you have not a lot of better choices. In team games, um, 10 seconds aim time in the three salvo links is really, really nice. In one versus ones, I don't think this is very good. Uh, because in one versus once, if you spend 130 points on artillery, you want it to be able to get you know its investment back fairly quickly. Of course, the Eurogen doesn't often you know kill something worth 120 points, although not rarely it does, but not very often. Um, but by stunning and panicking everything instantly, of course, it kind of makes very easily or really quickly its value back. You know, you stun an enemy tank, panic it, and then you suddenly are or have much easier time killing it. Of course, so it indirectly made his points back. Uh, AS90 has a harder time with that because it fires three shots with a high rate of fire, same rate of fire as the beacon, you know, three shots with three seconds in between. So you fire, three seconds, fire, three seconds, fire. Uh, but then you have to reload for 30 seconds again, every time. Uh, so over the course of, you know, a couple of minutes, you don't actually have a significantly higher rate of fire than other artillery pieces on average. Which is why it again shows four RPM on the AS90 and like uh, five RPM on the on Dava, even though in within the salvo the AS90 has a higher reload time. But this is the case where, you know, if it had like four or f ideally it had at least five shots, five shots with three seconds in between would be amazing, They're really good. Or but even four would be a significant improvement. Three seconds means it has a hard time actually killing something on its own with one salvo, unless it's like an infantry unit, but even then you have to be a bit lucky because it's not pinpoint accurate. So it, you usually need a stack of two for them to be really strong. And in one versus once, it's hard to get that rolling because of 130 point investment that basically doesn't really get something done un unless you're lucky or snipe a CV. Oh, it's just hard to justify. But on the other hand, in team games, it's much, much easier to spend these points and then suddenly it can get really rolling. So this is why I'm gonna give it eight here. It's not useless in one versus ones, of course, you know, don't get me wrong, but um, I'd say in one versus ones, it might just be C tier compared to, you know, Cessa. Even I, th I would say that may even the Ondava might be better in one versus ones, despite its like horrendous reload time of 8.5 seconds. Tunja, 5 HE motors. I think 5 HE motors are automatically A tier, at least B tier, but they might just be A tier um, because they're, in my eyes, the best motors. Uh, of course, they have a higher aim time than 4 HE motors on 3 HE and 2 HE motors, except for a few ones. Uh, but they have much higher range. They do bigger smoke loads. Of course, they have a lower rate of fire, but I also find them a lot more consistent with their smoke, with, with less gaps. And the range, of course, means you can use them at multiple front lines much easier. And of course, with the damage, um, it's also just nicer. I think they are also more consistent when when you actually want to support your infantry in forest. Unless, of course, you're looking at AML 6 to 20 or something like that. But I think 5 HE motors, um, unless they're like, they're like really, really expensive or something, like the VPL or VPM, or carry only very few rounds, like the VPM, or I guess the VPM doesn't carry that few rounds, but it's 60 points. Um, unless they have a significant drawback, I think they're very quickly A tier worthy, at least. Hold on, how much ammo does the Prime have? 81. Jesus. Hold up, one second. What's the average? Oh, 60 seems fine, okay. I was just checking the average ammo count roughly for 5 VG motors. Uh, because I never use this because the Prime is available. I want to quick, quickly check if this is like may, may very, maybe significantly below average. The Core Young. Um, I also tried this, tried this next to the... MSSR, uh, but it has the same rockets, it's the same rate of fire, it fires 36 instead of 24, but of course it also costs more. But the other thing is the Core Young reloads for four whole minutes, 240 seconds before being able to fire again. The MSSR only 168 seconds, um, so not even three minutes. Uh, and that is a huge difference, right? And of course, you know, with the price, you know, means, you know, for two core youngs, you can get three MSSRs. I would go for the MSSR anytime. Um, well, honestly, just that honestly makes it D tier. 
We have another 30 point mortar. What's the ammo count compared to the 81? Oh, you have actually only 100, per 100 rounds for 3 HE is actually pretty bad. Because, of course, with low HE means you fire more. Um, need to fire more, but the actual salvo fires more rounds. I mean, I don't think, I don't know if there's going to be any more in the D tier, but you, you might argue that there should be a D tier motor. If there's a worse motor, it should automatically be in a D tier, kind of. But. I'm just. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm, I really don't know. How how low is Han? Hold on. Let me check the by the armor tool. How low is actually with the actual reload time and stuff? Um, it fires on average eighteen point seven five rounds a minute. I guess the thing is correct here. So it can fire not quite six salvos. Uh, uh, not six hours, but six minutes. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I think it's still fine. I think it's still fine, especially given that we gave the what 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 is it the bison with ninety rounds also see here even though it's more expensive. K mono six forage motor. I think it's the first forage motor. There's nothing particular amazing about it. I think that's pretty average ammo counts with 72. I mean the K242 is virtually the same thing. The chassis differences are very negligible. I would also always go for the M106 because who cares about one extra front armor and five more KMH honestly. Um, K55 once again one of those it's probably just literally an M109 I presume. K9 Thunder now, once again, let's take a look at its actual fire pattern. It fires three shots, like the Ace 90, with a shot reload of five seconds, though. And then it has to reload for 30 seconds. Uh, it's just straight up worse. It fires a small bit faster than Cesar, M109, A5, and the Mister, but only only three rounds. That's just. It's still it's still 10 seconds. But and but the thing is. The, the the really high range is virtually useless outside of maps like uh, what's it called? And it's straight to the point, of course, or the rotated version. But um, the one with the Vul Vulcan, um, smoke in, is it smoke in the water? It's not smoke in the water. Anyway, you know the map I mean, right? You know, outside of these fringe scenarios, the range is useless because howitzers don't you know get more accurate the closer you are to the minimum range. They are just as accurate at the minimum range as they are on the maximum range, unlike MLRS systems. So that range, there's no benefit on virtually any map unless you're playing some of these weird matches, which, no, you do you, but I don't, and most people don't. Outside of, I guess, 10 to 10 straight to the point. But even then, on straight to the point, I think the way spawns are, even then, you know, might not need that range. Um, it's still 10 seconds, though. You know, it's still 10 seconds aim time. Oh, this is a fun little unit that I like. Um, so it's... For 10 points less, it has a higher dispersion, higher range, but again, although... Like compared to the 70 point M110s. So the 70 point M110, let's first actually do this first. Um, solid piece. We did the 203 SP, but it's an M110 A2 with more range. But the basic M110 has only one issue, and that is the range. On some maps, you might actually not quite reach the front line or where you want to fire, so, uh, such as a Nuclear Winter, Highway, or bigger team maps. But when it comes to one versus one maps, it's mainly Nuclear Winter and Highway where that sometimes might be an issue. So might have to drive out of out of your starting zone and get a supply truck next to it for it to fire. Um, which the K107 does not have the issue. But that's that's the issue of the M110, the basic M110. And that's why the M110 A2 is usually a bit preferred, just because in these fringe scenarios on these maps, you just don't have to worry about that. It's still a solid piece, but yeah. Now the KM107, for 10 points less, you get a bit uh, lower splash radius. Uh, and not insignificant, not not insignificant lower splash radius, but still much higher than you know seven HG artillery. You are less accurate. Um, you have the same low aim time, and the same of course uh, rate of fire and, and and stuff like that. Let me actually take a look. Um, 
but you use less supply per, per round, but you also have a significantly higher availability. And having a f stack of four or five or even more of them fire in an area, then you sometimes even want that low, lower accuracy. That thing is actually kind of scary. Um, and I think it's a bit underrated. Which is why I'm actually gonna put that in B tier. And I think in one versus one, superior to the K9 Thunder. Uh, another 3 HM motor, this time with more ammo than the previous one. What can I say? Mac Mats is one of the two unique DLC only 6 HE motors. Uh, they're an interesting bunch. I haven't used them a whole lot, but they're just. They're, they're more like uh, your. They're more like a. Um, what's it called? Amos. It also has 10 seconds aim time and not like whatever it usually is, but it also only has a splash radius of 80 and 240, respecti 240 respectively for HA and suppression. So it's not, it still uses the, the formula of um, mortars, uh, I believe. Does it? Uh, yeah, it does. Where it's essentially uh, the splash radius for Damage is half the caliber, and the splash radius of supply, uh, suppression is 1.5 times its caliber. Um, so, you know, if it, if it had this radius of uh, howitzers, then it would have a higher splash radius and damage radius for than like a uh, Cesar or something, which would be hilarious. But yeah, this is more of a damage uh, dealing howitzer motor, so it's much closer to your typical howitzers or something. Also, the range is much higher than other motors. <laughs> So it, it, yeah, it also eats supply like nothing else with 48 supply per shot. More than in Beacon 1A, for example. Um, yeah, it's just, it just feels a completely different road. You, if you want a mortar mainly for smoking, don't use this. If I would put this in my deck, I would probably still put in this light. Okay, I guess this isn't even, isn't even prototype. So uh, another motor. Um, so yeah, don't use this as your only motor. If you if smoke is important to you, if you don't care about smoke or you very rarely use it, then whatever. But if you also want to use a good amount of smoke, don't use just the six H motor. Put another motor into your deck, please. Um, or if you use your motor only for smoke, then don't use this motor. It's also, let me actually check, it's also the only motor with 5 seconds aim time for smoke, so it's, it aims far, it's slower than any other motor for its smoke rounds. Um, offensively though, I don't even know. I don't even know how strong it is. I haven't played with or against it a whole lot. Because everyone just uses the Martin ID, of course, for good reason. Um, oh, that's a rough one. It's a tough one. I think it's still B tier though. I mean, for one, of course, the added um, usability of being smoked, but I rate this more like I do howitzers. But I think the six HG motors are in a unique position. I wouldn't quite compare them to other motors, but I also wouldn't quite compare them to other howitzers. It's a unique little thing. Laro Mortier. Actually, it's also a two HG motor, just like the AML. But it also carries 120 rounds, right? Uh, however, it has no armor and only 5 HP. And I believe it probably also... Let me... I, I can check this real quick. I just have to find it in a second. I believe it also has a different mobility uh, moving type. Maybe it doesn't, actually. Let me check something. Doesn't look like it actually does. So it looks like... Um, it, what is, what is... Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to come up with something. Uh, okay. It does actually not move uh, slower through forests than other wheeled vehicles. Okay, in that case, I mean, it still moves slower than you know tracks or gets a higher penalty than tracked stuff. But I was I thought that it might get a bigger speed penalty in forests than the AML sixty. 
Um, but of course, it carries twice the ammo. But it's also, of course, much more prone to enemy counter artillery. Um, but yeah, despite having literally twice the ammo, I think it's not hugely better. And um, of course, it's 25 points and not 20. Another typical 3 HM motor. More ammo than the bison, while costing less, by the way. But of course, as do all YP408s have, uh, all, the same problem they all have is the low autonomy. 4G motor. Lars. <laughs> this is an interesting one. This is an interesting one. Um, recently, I've been saying that I prefer this over the Lars 2. I've gone back on this from now. From this, I guess I should say, after I played a lot of uh, a, bit, a bit of Lanjut. Um It is honestly still a bit underrated because it has a 0 0.2 seconds uh, shot reload with its full 36 rounds. And um, if you compare this to the last, the suppression of uh, the, the actual radius of the rockets are the exact same for both suppression and damage. It's just that when you get hit by the damage, you know, in, in, or you're getting caught in a damage radius. You just take a bit more damage from the Lars too, but that's honestly not a big deal because it's mainly about the suppression. Um, but the actual, so so basically, the Lars fires thirty six with this with this crazy rate of fire, and the Lars two only eighteen, of course. And um, but the actual that in and of itself, and you know that in my eyes makes up for the thirty seconds aim time compared to the Lars two, which has fifty seconds aim time. Um, the actual issue of the Lars one in my eyes. Um, and th this is all fine. It's all fine and dandy. If only that was the difference, then I would still prefer the last one. The big difference is actually that um, after you fired, the last one has to reload for 216 seconds. That's more than three and a half minutes. The last two only has to reload for 72 seconds after each 18 shot salvo. And it's not not even one and a half minutes. It's one minute and 12 seconds. So you can use this crazy often, especially if, if you have a supply drug nearby or you can fire from the fob. Um, even though it's very inaccurate most of the time when you fire from the fob, unless of course the enemy is right next to your doorstep, um, or you're playing on paddy field, I suppose, um, just due to the fact that if you get two or three or even more at the fob, you can fire them so often that eventually you're gonna get some use out of them despite the horrible rate of fire. Um, so yeah, I, th I still think the Lars is a bit worse than the Lars 2. But I think it's actually still underrated nonetheless. Both of them in B tier, by the way. Um, I don't think the Lars 2 is that much better that it makes it a tier better, or the Lars is so much worse that it's a whole tier worse. Also, is, is this... No, okay. The driver's actually fine in here. A Mars... It's a pretty underwhelming cluster MLRS. Uh, some people like to use it. I think Putin has also tried using it, but I'm not convinced. Uh, it's 12 rounds with only 6 AP compared to the Smudge, where it's 8 AP. And um, it's also high splash radius when it comes to the Smudge, of course. It's just the same issue with all cluster MLRS, but it's just, it just can't really kill. I think it's, it's of course, still usable. It's not completely garbage. Um, what? One versus ones, I would not suggest using it. Team games can be fine because then you can stack them in two without like, and or like, spend those two forty points much more easily. Other than that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this um, because basically any other deck that Germany is in has better access to better stuff. Um, I guess I could see it in Dutch German for team games because then the more line might not be so great. Um, although then you also have the lands. Which is just a me machine, but in in Eurocore, of course, you want the LRM, and in Landjut, I would always use the Lars too. Or the or you can always use M110s. Um, but yeah, that is that is gonna be part one of the artillery ranking. Lots of deed here, but it's because there's just so many copies. We're gonna have a lot more copies to come. Um, not a whole lot more unique ones, but still a good amount. And yeah, uh, this is definitely going to be a two-parter. Next part is going to be the last one. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll hopefully see you next time. See ya!